Okay, again, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, my name is Andrew. Well, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about automating standard work and making your company more efficient by using recurring task lists and lining those recurring task lists to your company assets and using a digital dashboard to do all of this. So you can see the agenda in front of us. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is who this webinar is for, so we can tick the boxes to make sure we're all in the right place, speak a little bit about what standard work is, introduce the software platform, and then we're going to, the, today's demo is going to be a bit special because we're just going to be showing you our company, the way we manage top tactical intelligence of London, the company that both Chris and I work for. And then uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for some Q&A. So again, thanks for joining us, both myself and Chris. We've been in management. Uh, we've been management consultants now between the two of us for at least thirty uh, combined years, um, spreading across multinational companies. Uh, especially in the first half, I, speaking for myself, the first half of my career, I, was, I spent most of my time doing operating model uh, efficiency type activity in multinational companies, um, and. Uh, in both myself and Chris in multinational areas, we're in transportation, transport, finance, me especially. I worked a lot of many years in, in financial services across quite a few countries, uh, pharma, telecommunications. But uh, since we joined since we joined this company and we're starting to work with uh, uh, work with smaller companies, uh, bringing the lean management methodology, to the smaller companies where obviously bigger companies have more success. Um, we started, myself, personally speaking, I've uh, widened my uh, experiences with going into manufacturing, healthcare, and even marketing. So we have quite a few interesting clients that have given us these type of experiences. But as you can see, uh, this is a very lean-focused product, lean-focused organization. So uh, last thing about the, about the software, about the company, Together, Chris and I have more than 12 plus years just building software as software engineers. The com our company has been around now since 2016. It's London-based. And uh, I'll get, if you don't know it already, I'll send you some information so you can uh, inform yourself if you're interested in potentially joining us or using our product, which you can start using it for free if you're uh, interested in with no time frame at all we have a freemium version this is one of our one of our goals of last year that we launched in december so who's this webinar for well at the highest level it's for business leaders that are trying to make their company more efficient and that's what i put for the first uh, bullet point it's also for decision makers looking to increase urgency and accountability in their staff uh, what you're going to see today you're going to see uh, digitizing your standard work portfolio so that your workers are going to work faster and they're going to work with more accountability. And, and that's not just because of the automation you're giving them, but also the top-down helicopter view of your company that's going to allow you to be in a better position to know when to delegate or, or when to coach, when to get hands-on. This is for team leaders looking to upskill in work delegation and coaching. That's what our solution is all about. It's for cost controllers looking to squeeze savings from their company without laying people off or redeploying or laying people off if that's what they're actually trying to do, if they're trying to downsize. And this is for freelancers and small businesses who are, who are looking to take an approach of a, of a multinational company so that they can actually be scalable. The famous cliche word, I want my company to be scalable. This is the type of solution you want to put in place if you kind of have everything just all over the place and you really want to start investing in housekeeping. Who this webinar is not for, <clears throat> a couple heads up. So if you're looking for a silver bullet solution or a secret sauce, strongly don't recommend this software. Um, you do need to get your hands dirty to get your company up and running. Now, I will highlight that when you do that, that is an in intense, excellent exercise. Everybody involved gets to see their company from a different way. And I think you'll, uh, I think you'll agree with me once you actually see the, uh, the product in action. Um, this is not for people that, uh, that don't believe in investing in process management. If you don't like the idea of cataloging processes and reviewing your processes and measuring your processes, this solution is not for you. If you prefer to just get stuff done without a set method and keeping a trace of things, um, you're one of those people that definitely don't like to don't like to write to keep track of bits of information regarding tasks and stuff like that. You just want to get it done, get out of the way. Well, this this product's not for you either. Uh, you don't believe in following the principles of lean management. 
obviously this is a lean management focused solution and it follows a lot of the philosophy. So if, if you if you don't get along with lean, strongly recommend this is not for you. Um, you want to see instant results and don't have the patience to put in the work. So what we like to say is, um, you will, you can get huge value from this product, but you got to you got to roll up your sleeves for a bit. You got to, and we we basically after a few weeks you're going to start seeing some efficiency value. Now I'm not saying you have to work full time to get the product up and going. To be honest with you, we can even help you spend as little as two or three hours a week, and then. After a couple of months, you'll see some, you'll see real significant value, cost savings, and you'll start seeing your team more focused and working better. But of course, you gotta, you gotta get the wheel turning. You gotta roll up your sleeves a bit at the beginning. And then finally, you are a free trial type person looking to move mountains on a shoestring budget. So obviously, you gotta put the time in, you gotta dedicate the resources, and you gotta pay for your license. So that said. Let's talk a bit about what is standard work. I like this quote right here because it helps you understand that excellence is all about being consistent. It's all about being disciplined. And that's what Aristotle said over here. He's, uh, he's saying what we, we are, what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but it's a habit. It's standard work is all about doing something over and over again with the focus to make it better, better, and better. And Presto PDCA, our software solution, is going to allow you to do that, digitize things, and cut down the amount of time it takes to learn how to do things and increase the efficiency every time you do it because you're teaching people to keep their eyes open for bottlenecks and opportunities to continuously streamline. So that's a, a bit of a definition. I'm going to read this. Standard work refers to the documented best practices for performing a task or process efficiently and consistently. It ensures that everyone follows the same steps, leading to high quality and predictable results. Standard work includes detailed instructions, timing, and sequence of activities, and it's often used in lean management to continuous improvement efforts. So I took the time to read that just because I, I would invite you to start thinking, does my company follow this? mantra does it follow this logic and 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 if it doesn't then it's uh, it's it's obviously a uh, it's costing you it's costing you time every day <clears throat> costing you money to get things done but it's also a great opportunity to to understand what where the gaps are in your company to be a more streamlined organization uh before i go into the demo chris did you want to add anything i've been doing all the talking so now. no no it's fine andrew i think um like you said, this is this is about um, repeatable task, and if you repeat it time and time again, it becomes more efficient, it becomes more accurate, um, mm. and, and you're removing waste. So this you know, standard work is fundamental for, you know, improving efficiency, removing waste, removing defects, and so on. Okay, thanks, Chris. Okay, so tell you a little bit about our company. We're a small company, we're London-based, and you can see we set ourselves up like this. And the reason I'm showing you this is because we're going to go onto the dashboard in a second. You can see we got five key areas of business, five five departments. You know, you're a small company, but the when you're thinking about scaling, you're constantly thinking about, okay, we might have 15 people in this company, but I want to run it like we have 150. And this is how we've grouped our functions and, how, and what you'll see shortly, how we've grouped our processes and the checklist that support those processes. So we have a team dedicated just a function, dedicated just to strategy and change management. We have finance, legal, HR, and compliance. Business development, that's where you have all your marketing, sales, partnership, uh, promotional type things. We have operations and client service. That's where you keep your clients close to your heart and you give them everything they need to make sure they're satisfied with your value. And then, of course, we have our IT and product development team, which is working pretty much six days a week to make sure the software is, is as user-friendly and as, val as valuable as it can be. So taking that a little bit further, where do we use Presto to manage standard work? So in our general management team, we manage our board meetings. We manage the way we set up the agendas, the minutes. Um, we manage uh, the review of the KPIs on a set recurring checklist every time we have a board meeting. Strategy and, and change management, we have uh, checklists that help us put a project charter in place, set up project governance, give PMO status updates from a finance, legal, and HR uh, point of view, we have 
a wealth of checklists here that are just dedicated to um, getting payments out, setting up data protection, getting cyber essentials essentials accredited, filing annual tax uh, filings, reporting to companies' house where our, where our companies set up, all those type of things that have to be very highly controlled. And that's where our, our CFO, Martin Higgs, is uh is is working his magic putting together a lot of uh, very very many <clears throat> detailed recurring tasks standard work checklists that support all these things and it's good that he does that uh, as we're digitizing those things that means that the next person that takes over for him or anybody that has to give him a hand has that act has those things uh very accessible without having to pick his brain too much uh, from a business development point of view we have a very a wide set of checklists that keep our daily sales and marketing program up up and uh, up and running do managing webinars uh email outreach newsletters all those type of things those are checklists that you want to assign to somebody with dates and and you want to track those things until they get done you want to make sure they get done completely from an operational point of view client onboarding customer complaint management quality assurance product training all the things that you need to be very good and spot on with when you when you're working with your clients and you're trying to keep them and finally, from a product development point of view, here's where we're using a lot of agile type uh, frameworks that we put in place on, in our standard work when it comes to product design, product development, launching fe new features, um, administration and email support. So just to give you an idea, these are all areas where we have invested in process excellence. And I hope you'll agree with me shortly. So about to go take a look at the software. This is called Presto Plan Do Check Act. Presto PDCA is the official name. Most of us just call it Presto. Um, we'll stop for a second just to let you know everything you see today. It's a software. You can go online. You can set up a free account and you can start working. You can, I believe, you can put up to ten or fifteen teams in there. Probably twenty-five processes, twenty-five checklists, completely free, no expiration date. Um, if you want to have all of that unlimited, I believe the price is about, if you're in the U.S., it's about $12 per month. So everything you're seeing today, you can get uh, complete access for $12 a month. However, what you're going to see today, you're going to see uh, standard work is a, is a discipline. It requires a lot of concentration. And if you want help getting up to speed, we'll be happy to be with you on the journey. You can buy a monthly package, as you can see here, for $316 a month. Um, and you'll, what you'll get is you'll get actually four licenses. You'll get a couple initial training sessions with us, and then you'll, you'll spend one hour every two weeks with us. So you can book slots as you wish. So we can just help you get your dashboard up and running, help you get, help you get the, your team leaders in a position so that they're constantly, uh, thinking about making this, their, their processes more streamlined and get your dashboard to allow them them to report everything that's going on to the senior managers in a, in a more efficient way. And we'll be happy to do work with you that way. If you really want to make an investment, you can buy an annual membership and there's a bunch more things in there, which also include waste, uh, waste uh, management and KPI management. If you want to set up your KPI portfolio, we'll be glad to take this discussion offline. Um, just, just know what you see here. You can get an additional 25% discount just for coming to this webinar. Let us know. We'll give you a coupon. Uh, offer expires by end of day. Uh, what's the date? I did uh, tomorrow, but on the 29th. So looking at the dashboard, what are you getting from the software? You see yourself, uh, this isn't our company, but that's the famous DuPont toy manufacturer. And what you get, you get to see how your span of control. So when Samuel, the managing director of DuPont toys looking down, he can see that in manufacturing, there's four teams that Mike is, is responsible for underneath him. He can see that there's seven people that are supporting Mike's team. And he can see that Mike is also responsible for 20 processes for manufacturing. So this directly from the dashboard, you know already um, who's doing what. You're going to go with it. just a couple clicks. You're going to go see who those seven people are. You're going to go see who, what those 20 processes are without even having to call anybody. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about HR management, but Presto also reports when you have staffing and issues or role and responsibility misalignment. But what we are going to talk about today is all the standard work checklists that are in those processes. Uh, you build these beautiful um, digitized checklists 
recurring rec of your recurring tasks and you can be able to go in there and get yourself up to speed when you're going to go meet with somebody to talk about their business or you're going to take over somebody's role this is where all the know-how is and not only do you have your checklist in there you have every document that supports that checklist lined up and linked so you can access it you don't even need to know what folder it's been saved in it's what's important is that it's lined up to the process to to the standard work checklist so i think i'm gonna have to log into the system now if it it may have logged me out already, but first example we'll do, let's talk a bit about when our CFO does the annual tax filing. So he has a special checklist to get that done. We want to make sure it gets done every year uh, the same way without any bottlenecks. So when he lands on his dashboard, you can see there he is. He has his macro process and his micro processes. So the micro process number five, annual filings of accounts to company's house. He has his checklist, his standard work checklist in there. And he also has one document that's lined up to that, which is a procedure. So what we'll do now, let's jump onto our dashboard. So here I am, this is our company. I'm gonna jump all the way to the top to start. And what you see here now, so you can see there's here's our company. You can see we got people, we got processes, and we got a span of control, as you can see over here. So there's Martin's team. Now, just a quick introduction. Uh, when you click on the teams, what you can do now, this is a great opportunity for you to start just telling every team leader, any process, any subject matter expert, that it's their responsibility to give back to the company everything they know. Their know-how needs to be digitized. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm telling Chris, head of strategy and change management, tell us what you do, Chris. And he's telling us, this is what this team is all about. These are the processes that this team is working on. These are the roles on the, that, uh, that, that this team requires. Uh, these are the people that are in those roles. So what we can do now, we'll go take a look at Martin's team and you can just go straight to your org chart. I'm gonna jump to Martin's uh, finance, legal and business admin. And what you see here now, there's our CFO. He's running finance, compliance, corporate admin, finance, human resources. We got legal and general admin. Where, which is in the hands of Alessandro Ferrari, one of our co-founders. And then we have our merchant of record relationship, which is a company called Paddle. The gentleman, gentleman's name is Amande. So you can see we got, we, we got people on the dashboard. Now you can see Martin wears multiple hats, like most of us in small companies. And that's why you see his face in many teams. But these are the processes. And, and you know, when Martin built this department, he said it's very important that we separate those things. Uh, so the next person that comes in, so as we grow, we know how to allocate resources. Now, in this case here, we're talking about tax filing. So I'm going to click on that number 20, and you can see he does management of financial accounts. These are the key processes that he's supporting in that asset group, uh, excuse me, the uh, process group, macro process. And right now we're talking about annual filing of documents to company's house. And there is the checklist he's put together for you. So he says there's four major steps that you need to do. And if I go into the into this box over here, he's taking it even further. He's giving you a description. He's telling you from a racy accountability point of view who needs to do what. So you can see that would be step two, step three, and step four, reporting to the board of directors. And here you can see he's actually responsible. And, that, and you can see he's the board of directors, because Chris and Alessandro are informed on this one. So what that allows you to do now, imagine you were taking over in this company for Martin, before you even start meeting with him, asking him questions, at least you can start taking a look and say, okay, when I do this process here, at least I know step by step who needs to do what and, and where they are in the racy accountability matrix. So he's given you that, but of course, every process has a lot of nitty gritty details that a lot of times you don't want to distract people with, but you want to have available. And that's why he's given us a procedure. So he's, he says, there's the annual tax filing operating procedure. He's, he's linked it and he's telling us it's a Word document. And what you do with this panel here, you name your document, you, you use the doc document taxonomy. So he's saying it's a procedure and this level two, it's an operational procedure. And he's telling you it's a DOC, Microsoft uh, Word document. If it was Excel, he would have put XLS giving it a name, you can put a description, he's telling you what condition it's in, and then here he's giving you the link 
that that's the link to the to the shared folder where the uh, document sits. So I don't know where he saved that, but if I ever want to see that, as long as I have access to the shared folder, all I have to do is click on this and I'm going straight to the shared folder and you can see it's immediately opening up a Word document. There's our standard operating procedure for filing taxes in the UK for limited liability company. And now this is great now because like I said, if I'm taking over for this team or put yourself in the shoes of the new CFO, oh. you know exactly what the, uh, what those the four steps are and what the document is so at this point in time just to simplify things one of the first let's imagine that we want we need to do this we need to do this next month so one way you can do it um you can schedule these type of things so i could come here and say i, I this needs to be done every 14th of january and when i turn this on what this means is that this schedule this checklist is is going to be exported to that uh standard work dashboard that we're looking at um this case, we, we prefer to do it ad hoc, so I'm gonna turn that off. So one way I can get that checklist on the dashboard, all I really need to do is click this button here and export it. Now, if I wanna export it to Excel or Word, you can also do that. If you wanna print it, you can also do that. We're talking about these four steps. So now close that, close that. And you're gonna see now on Martin's dashboard, we go back in, here we are on the standard work dashboard, there we are. And you can see this is what we've just uh, launched. So I'm gonna open this up now. And you can see there is annual filing of end of year statement of accounts. So if I click on that, I'm going into the checklist. There's the checklist we just spoke about. You can see at the highest level, there's our racing matrix. And as you can see, Presto is all about lean, lean methodology, lean philosophy. And that starts with respect for people. Uh, and to respect people, the first thing you can do is you can be clear about people's roles and responsibilities. And Presto is all about teaching the company about the racing matrix. And I think if you would ask our clients, even the non-Presto users, uh, become more informed and become more effective in using the racing matrix just by having people in the company that use Presto because then you start to integrate the, the, the racy language just into your daily conversations when you start talking about activity management. So immediately, you know, what, what does it mean to be responsible? What does it mean to be accountable? And again, you're constantly t explaining to people where their roles and responsibilities are. So here, this is a typical, this is a typical project management panel that you would see here so you can uh, I can say this task here needs to be done by the 20th this task here needs to be done by the 27th now a bunch of things that you, you probably haven't seen before if, you, if you're not a user of this product uh, start with what we call the zoom function so if I want to zoom into this task here I'm going to go into it now here it is now if you remember Martin had a special racy assignment just for this task he's telling you he's giving you the description of this task and here you can say, you know what, the start date for this task is going to be the 20th. So you, you can start really getting to that next level of detail uh, when you need to. Of course, the, the goal is that you're not forcing people to put thing, information in if the company doesn't need it. You, we want you to be able to stay at the highest level that you need to be without sacrificing uh, the security of, or quality of what you're doing. It, obviously, it depends on the level of importance, the level high, of high profile your, the activity is. So in this case here, he's going to say the second task, he's going to start on the, uh, on the 20th. Now, one thing I want to point out to you, I, if I if I land on this, I'm going to go at the project level. And what you also have is you have templates. And guess what that is? That's a link to the document or the documents that support the process. So again, if you're just new to, to this job, to this activity, you can come here and you can say, what's that activity? What's that procedure? You click on it. And of course, you're going straight to the shared drive where the process owner has given you a template. And then what you'll probably do, you would probably, if, if you need, if you're, if, the process is involves creating a new document. You'll save your own copy of it, and then you'll upload it to this panel here. So then you actually have new documents that are being born within the life of an activity, a project, or a process. So you can see here, you're putting dates, you're putting people, you're uploading documents if you need to. So this uh, let's take a box. So now you can see we got one task done, three are still open. And of course, there we are in the PDCA cycle. We'll get into that a bit more shortly. Uh, but just you at the top of the company, you can see you're currently in the do phase and it's green. So basically myself, before I close out every day, I'm looking at anything that's yellow or red. And, I, and that's, that's how you start to really plan for next day, for next week, for next month. So 
starting, uh, we started off simple. We're going to get a little bit more uh, uh, complex as we go along. But what I like to highlight now, now this is a, one of the newest features we have. Um, I believe that project management solutions out there are going to copy us very soon once they realize how effective this is. If you ask our clients that are actually using this feature, even though it's only about four or five months old, they're all saying the same thing that they're getting much more efficient. And I can, I'm the first one to say, you know, I, I'm in the morning, I'm managing a team of sometimes up to six people working in IT, working on uh, development, working on system administration. And we're constantly looking at deliverables, recalibrating our expectations, you know, creating new tasks, removing tasks. So it, it gets pretty, it gets pretty challenging. And this new feature you're about to see allows us to move much more efficiently. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about um, the fact that you're governing activities from the dashboard, but you're also pushing people to do things at the at the rhythm you want them to. So the first thing that you get to allow, to allow people to work faster, you get the real-time top-down governance. So you look from the top here, I can see that Martin has uh, something that he's doing and it's green. Now, if I'm, if I'm a bit nervous, I'm going to go click on that and figure out what that is. But taking things further, you also have this feature that is very unique. And we call this the push email notifications. So, so basically, um, Presto allows you to send emails and to send alert messages. So what you can see We just opened up a new activity. And um, what you see there now, you can just start scrolling through here. When you see something that happened, you just have to click on it and it's gonna open it up for you immediately. So you can, your curiosity in, a, in, a, in, a, in five short seconds can allow you to confirm whatever it is that you're thinking about. And what we like to uh, uh, advise, propose to most clients, especially new ones, is just turn off all the email features because most companies, are complaining that they're getting too many email messages in their inbox to tell them that they, they got things that are due. Um, maybe at the very least, at, at maximum, turn on the email feature. So when somebody creates a new project, everybody gets an email, but then configure it so that they're not getting emails when people are ticking boxes and changing things. But leave the, uh, leave the alerts on. So these alerts here, allow you to see everything when things are created, when things are ticked, when things are approaching the due date, when notes are added, when documents are added, um, and so forth. But what we do like to use is what we call the push function. And what that is, so what you can do now, you can go in there and you can say, okay, this checklist here, I want the people that are working on it to do something. I want them to give an update. I want them to tell me why it's red. And what you can do now, you can then just easily go in and have Presto send out an email to them with information that you decide you want them to see. So what I mean by that, let's imagine that, in fact, let's simulate that this situation here with Martin, let's imagine that he was trying to get this done, the second step done for today. And, you know, on the, day, on the, on the due date, it automatically turns red. If you don't calibrate it to turn red before one day, before the due date, which you can definitely do. So if I'm, you know, I'm, I, I know nothing about what's going on here, but I come to the dashboard, I say, oh, wow, we've got something overdue. What is that? I open this up and I can see, okay, we got a task that was due on the 19th. This was a download the Barclays end of year bank statement. So now what you can do, coming here, now keep your eye on the RACI matrix. These are all the people that are expected to be involved in this. And I'm going to let Presto send an email. But before I let it do it, I'm going to decide who's going to get it and what it's going to show. So in this case here, I'm, I'm actually not going to send it to Martin or he might actually get upset. He might, um, I'm not going to send it to Alessandro. I'll send it to myself. I'll send it to Chris as well because he's in there. And I'm going to put a note. I'm going to say, hey, guys, what's happening with this? Please uh, give update uh, by end of day today. Okay, so putting a note and I'm going to send it. And now what you're going to see, I'm going to go to my Gmail so you can see it in action. So you go to, um, there's my Gmail and immediately you're gonna see there's a new mail in there. It says project, annual filing of end of year statement of accounts. And the first thing I see is Andrew has pushed this to you. 
And basically, so you're going to see the name of the person that actually pushed it. So if you're if you're a supervisor and you send this to somebody, the first thing they're going to see is your name. You're pushing. You're looking for an update. I open that up, and this icon here. Now, just so you know, all those icons you saw in the alerts when I opened up that panel there, that's what you see at the top of the emails. But this is a special email that's being pushed. So we have this special icon. So anybody that sees on their handheld, they see that icon. They they, they it's an additional control that's saying, okay, Andrew has pushed something to me. And everything you see in yellow is the note we put in. Hey guys, what's happening with this? Please give an update by end of day today. Here you can see your tasks, download the quick file balance sheet, and you can see it was done, responsible Martin. Now here is where you are in the RACI matrix. So I'm actually informed on this. So no need to, no need to be nervous for myself, but I can see this task here is delayed. It was due today. Martin Higg, MH, is responsible for it. And then the other good thing, this is what allows you to use Presto in a very efficient way, and it allows you to use it with anybody you want, even if they're not users. And, and, and we don't advise that everybody in your company becomes users immediately. We just advise that a handful of team leaders with high responsibility use Presto to do what you see me doing right here. And in this case here, Imagine if you were uh, Chris who just got this email, he sees this, whether he has access to Presto or not, he knows what needs to be done, but you also have link to any document that's in there. As you remember, we have a template in that that was already updated. And that link, when you click on it, again, it's taking you directly to the uh, share folder. So basically you're giving everybody uh, that's responsible to do something, the information they need uh, to do their job. So one of the first things we do, if you have a bigger company, we would, we would have a discovery process to figure out who should be the users in the first few months, who should be, who should be the viewers, maybe go in the system and maybe just tick boxes and who should not use the system, but they definitely going to be receiving emails. Cause then you're going to tell people, guys, you're going to start getting an email from a system called Presto and it's going to, and it's going to have my name on it. And this is what we're going to do when, uh, when you start receiving those mails. So, very super useful task because now what happens when I do development with our team, we put together these big documents with all the design schematics and the mock-up requirements and they know now. So I know that this document that you see here, it's a link. So even if somebody goes in and they update it, uh, if tomorrow I'm curious of, of, of this activity and I, I, I can just go open up the email from two days ago and, and when I click on this link, I'm looking at the most current version of the document anyway. So, you know, even some of the developers actually <laughs> said to me, yeah, this is super useful for us. Uh, from the, it, it made the way we work together much better. And obviously it works good with any type of activity where you got people working at a distance, especially virtual work in the services industry. So uh, that was that. That's, uh, you, if you start using this, you're gonna notice once you get your standard work under control, things are gonna get done much quicker. And they're gonna get done quicker to the pace that you want it to be. You know, you might want to get that update three days before the due date and people are going to be forced, for the lack of a better word, to work at the rhythm you want them to be working at with minimal effort from your behalf. So talk a bit about simple best practice management. Uh, so decreased time to resolution on standard issues. So uh, a good a good best practice to uh, that you might want to uh, immediately put structure to is your customer complaints. You want that to be as standard as possible so that every time you learn something new, you can refine that, that uh, model so that your customers know, even when things go wrong, they feel good because they know how, they know what's gonna happen and they know that you're gonna solve the problem. So this point, uh, we're gonna talk about customer complaints on the onboarding team. And what you'll see here now, you see these packaged best practices that you have available out of the box just to get things going. And we're gonna to go to the issue management dashboard where you actually see the type of issue. So you have multiple views on your dashboard. You can, you can choose whichever you like, but when I'm looking at issues, I like to know if I'm looking at cost issues, morale issues, safety issues, productivity issues, quality issues, training issues, or innovation issues. So you can see here, we're gonna talk about, let's, let's assign a customer complaint to somebody. So jumping to the uh, issue management dashboard, I'll close this guy. And he, right now we're looking at the run the company activity. So we're running the company, all the standard work at work uh, value processes that you deliver are going on the standard work run the company dashboard. But when something happens, 
that you weren't expecting deviation is the lean people like to call it. Um, we're talking about issue management and we want to keep all of these items separate from the actual work that we're doing. Uh, and, and that's, and there's a, many advantages to that, especially from a senior management point of view, when you want to really understand what potential unexpected occurrences may derail your vision. So at this point, we we're gonna let's jump to the client service team. So let's imagine you don't know where that person is in the org chart. I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna type in uh, Vanni Fiorentini, who works with us from an operational readiness point of view. And you can also navigate by clicking over here through the through the company. And what we're gonna do, we'll go look at the customer success team. This is where we this is where most of your complaints go. So I'm gonna jump there, and you can see there's customer success, and you can see we've we've uh, we've divided these groups by region. So we have our SaaS client uh, support. So these are people; these are online users, small users that you know they have a, a monthly subscription, and we're for, and we're and we're supporting them. But then we also have our special clients in in uh, by region: North America, Latin America, UK, Middle East, Africa, and APAC. So here, let's just let's do a simple customer, uh, customer complaint. So I'm gonna click this button here. Now, what you saw earlier when I exported that checklist, we're doing exactly the same thing, but we're kind of doing it from the top down. So we're gonna add an issue. Now here's all, here's the, the teams we were looking at. And if we wanted to move up or down, we could. Um, we could actually just go find with this button here, anybody in the company and completely bypass what you see here. But for the, for the sake of being uh, clear of what we're doing, I, I, I landed us over here so you can see it. And now let's just assign to the customer, uh, the client support team, no, customer success team. Let's assign a customer complaint. And let's imagine it's a quality complaint. Customer received, uh, customer received, customer X, Y, Z received um, incorrect uh, incorrect invoice. So in other words, de defects. We we, we, in, we inputted some numbers that were incorrect. They received that, so now it's an issue. We got to fix that. So I'm going to save that, and you can see immediately we're opening up the customer complaint panel, and we've set this up to actually have three steps where you're opening the complaint, so you confirm the complaint, prioritize the complaint, and you can see on this team customer complaints are set up like that. So you can see there's Irwin who's taking in the complaint. Uh, there's uh, myself as accountable. You have Chris as a consulted party in the case in case we need his expertise on how to go about fixing it. And then when you get to the action plan phase, you can see this changes a bit in, this, in the closing phase, it changes a bit as well. And once again, this is all part of the setup process when you're working with your team to really understand what your processes are and who you want working in which phases super useful to really start getting people to understand what their role really is in the company. So I close that guy. You can see there it is quality complaint and there it is, it's red. So in other words, I would keep my eyes open on that. So that is a simple standard work. Now we're gonna take things a bit forward. We're gonna integrate the concept of plan, do, check, act with automated standard work. And this is where you start saving even more time you start reducing confusion, you start increasing employee morale because you have your roles and responsibilities aligned to your processes, but now you're actually gonna say, when we're carrying out our processes, whether it's a process or a project or an issue, we want to always be thinking about plan, do, check, act. So, and we wanna know when we need management, uh, management vision to figure out how to get this executed, when we need the team leaders to use their staff to get it done, when we have the staff actually doing it, and then what happens after, after some after the job gets done. How many times have you seen a good job get done, but then everybody just gets called into other things and it, the, the work that was done doesn't actually get utilized to its full potential. And that's why you want PDCA to put you in a position to uh, make sure no nothing gets missed every step along the way. So you can see here we're on the dashboard and you can see these are all activities that are ACK acknowledged. So there's a, this extra step that we add to PDCA because before you can plan anything, you have to acknowledge it, you have to approve it. You know, so what do you have in there? You have 
opportunity. People say, okay, let's create a new brochure next month. So we, we put it there, but it still might not be approved. We'll say it's a good idea, but it's 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 still in the act phase until you can put until you say, yeah, we're doing it, plan it. So then you, you would put it in the plan phase. And and by the way, this is also a great place to it's a great hopper to put all your ideas. But when you have an opportunity to do something, you know, we have an idea to potentially get, make something better. Now we're not going to go too much into it, but you would, you would put, uh, you wouldn't use the standard work dashboard as much as you would the project to change management dashboard. We're not going to go into that today, but our next webinar will be all about PMO and continuous improvement. So, but anyway, you can see here now, everything that's taking place from a plan, do, check, act point of view. And what this gives you now, especially as you're running your company, with one click, I'm going to say, let's take a look at what's going on in Deepa's website management team. She's got activities that are in the plan phase and the do phase and, and one activity that's been delivered, but it still needs to be closed. And so I'm going to click on that little button there and I'm opening up the PDCA report, which you already got a little taste of when we were booking those first items on the dashboard. But now you can see there's Deepa looking at all of her activities and most of the stuff you see here is linked to product development, you know, building a new feature, fixing a bug, um, uh, putting a new report on the dashboard. These are all little bits of work that are that are in the queue and we're trying to get them through the PDCA phase. So you can see there's three in the plan phase, two in the do phase, one in the act phase. But what this is really giving you from a governance point of view, it's telling you where directors may be needed. Now, when you see blue, it means everything's everything's complete, everything's closed. But directors are the ones that are going to decide if an idea is going to transform into an actual activity that you're going to invest in. In most cases, obviously, it depends what we're talking about. Um, but when you're, when you're talking about planning, you're talking about team leaders, people that have resources, they have people, but they need to be in a good position to know when they can leverage their resources and how long it's going to take to get the job done. So they need to be able, they need to be good at quoting timelines, lining talent to activities and identifying those activities. And of course, in your do phase, we're talking about your staff. Going back to the point I made a couple of seconds ago, um, once the staff get things done, team leaders are the ones that are going to be there and say, yes, good job or no, we need to we need to go back and do a little bit more work because the level of quality isn't what we were originally anticipating. And of course, once the once the work gets checked out and says, okay, the work has been done correctly, the act phase, you know, whether it's launching a new feature online, telling the customers, uh, sending them some information to let them know that that's what act phase is all about. It's also about thanking your staff. It's also about sharing best practices, sharing lessons learned. So if you think about a company that has multiple departments, especially if it has that famous silo uh, mentality, there's a good chance there were some lessons learned during through the course of some activity. And if you think about it, only the directors are in a position to identify that some, there's some knowledge that was acquired and that knowledge could potentially serve somebody else in another division, another department. So if you don't have that person in that act phase with that type of power, there's a good chance knowledge is growing in different directions in different in different departments and then and they're not synchronizing the way they should. If you work in big companies, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm, the point I'm making. So where do we use standard work? Uh, we use it a lot with... Um, a new feature release because if we're releasing a new feature um, we got people we got clients telling us what that feature is supposed to look like we got designer operations people that are saying okay this is how we could potentially build it into the software and then we got the developers that are going to do it a lot of times the developers don't exactly understand what the client is looking for so as you know it takes those people in the middle that understand the product they understand the client but they don't know how to code and, and that's perfectly fine. That's how that's that's how beautiful agile system can work. So in this case, how do we do a new feature release? Let's jump into the system. Um, let's go now. Jump to Binoy and Ramesh's team. I see we still got fifteen minutes, which is good. So I'm going to jump to the uh, product and IT team. Let's jump to Ramesh's. Uh, yeah. It's done to product and IT. So now you can see this is Binoy Mohan, managing director of our development team. This is our product team. You can see we get nine people that are working with us. We got 53 core business processes. Let's jump to the standard work dashboard this time. So here we are. And now we're going to do a new feature release. So let's in 
Ramesh is the head of product. He's the, he's our lead developer. And he's he's got three, sometimes four developers working underneath him, as well as one, sometimes two designers. Um, so here he is. He's saying product development, product enhancements, new features. So there's our checklist on how to do a product enhancement, starting with the approval, the assignment to the developers, the finalization of the requirements and the mockups, the design, the functional development, the first test review, and then it goes to the second level of testing. And then you're informing clients, creating training materials, releasing online and archiving. Now, if you take a look on the right, we have our PDCA cycle already aligned for us. As you can see, this approved the enhancement, that's the acknowledged task. And you can see piece by piece, we have a different, we have different people in the racing matrix who's assigning the developers usually. So now, now obviously this can change in certain companies, but it's nice to have, if, if it's standard and, you know, nine out of 10 times the same people, it's good to set them up here. So when you have an online meeting, you can say, this is how we, we create and release new features. And you can see immediately who's doing the designing. You can see who's doing the reviewing who's doing the material updating, who's, who can be asked for consultation in certain situations. It's a great way to build the process together if you're all sitting in a different place and you're just looking and you're doing a Zoom together. We've built so many processes this way where you just get the people in the racing matrix, throw the steps here and step by step, you come in here, put, do a brain dump, leave, leave your descriptions, leave your people. So what we'll do now, let's Assign, let's uh, launch this. Let's imagine we're going to do a new KPI report, a new feature for the KPI module. So I'm going to launch that. And what you'll see here, you'll see immediately onto our dashboard. When we come back to the noise dashboard, we should see there. There's our, uh, there it is. It's in the act phase. So I'm going to open that up and you can see new feature release. It's in the act phase. Because if you remember, there's the approve, approve the enhancement. And we've got it configured now to say, if whenever we have a new, uh, whenever we have, an, have this activity, the, uh, the, the act phase is immediately green. Now you can configure the dates as well. I, I, I have most of them turned off except for issue management. We're saying if an, if an issue gets acknowledged, we want it to be read immediately because we want people to see it. Yeah, even people that aren't actually working on that issue so they can they, they have more visibility and have better intuition as when they need to get involved so you can see there's the approve the enhancement there's our racing matrix and let's imagine that we've okay we approve it so i'm going to tick that box and you can see this the owner here is ih that's here when hirsch in deeper dj deeper dj um Jitesh. so i tick that box and now we're moving from ac to plan and those are the three plan tasks that we've We've pre-configured to say, as soon as it's acknowledged, I want them to be yellow because I want people to realize we got something to plan. And now you can see, there we are in the plan. There we are in the plan. There we are in the plan. Let's take it to the do phase. You can see, assign the developers. So now we're going to say, we know who, which developers are going to do this, approve the timeline. We know how long it's going to take. And now finalize the design requirements document, very important document that we need to upload uh, to this screen over here and say, this is, this is what, you're about to build. These are the these are the requirements. This is the design. So that we've imagined that I did that. So as soon as I tick this, now we're officially in the do phase, and we got to configure to say you're doing. Now you can also configure it to say you can't go into the do phase unless all all the all the dates are are inputted correctly. So you can you can force people to have to have to follow the dates. And in some situations, especially issues, it's very important to get people into that discipline. But you can see there we are. Um, if I were to put dates, let's imagine that approval needs to be done um, for tomorrow. Let's imagine that plan phase needed to be done by the 21st. And let's, and let's just choose one and say that the functional development needs to be done by the 30th. So, you know, the more discipline you get here, the better quality of information you get. So you can see here, just that looking at this, you know, this project's going to be done by the 30th of, of June. At least the due is going to be done. And then we need to check it. We need to act on it. So... Now that's what we call the one phase, uh, the one step Kanban board. But now let's imagine it's a, it's a high profile activity and you it's something that you really don't want to uh, let slide. So what you're going to do, you're going to enhance the PDCA cycle. And the same thing I just exported here, I'm going to, this time I'm going to get it from the top down, like I did before with the customer complaint. I'm going to assign it to Ramesh. I'm going to uh, assign a five step PDCA Kanban board. 
And this is a standard work. So it automatically is telling you productivity, but you could change it if for some reason it was different. And we're going to say create a, a new KPI bowler chart is available on the KPI dashboard. So this is the new piece of work we're going to assign them. Now, this time you're going to see we got this set up so that we can get more granular. We're going to acknowledge, and there's the person, there's the people that are going to acknowledge it, the directors. We're going to plan this. There's the people that are going to plan it. We're going to do it. There's the developers themselves. Now you can see I, I've set this up for simplicity's sake, so you don't. There's nothing in here yet. So what do you want to do? We're going to download that that checklist that you saw earlier. The 12, I think it's 12 steps. There it is, 12 step new feature release. But watch what it does. It um, dissects the checklist in par uh, par partion, <laughs> parcels it out to each of the PDCA phases. Now I'm gonna import that and you're gonna see, I tick the box, import. And now you're gonna see each of those steps allocated, assigned to the, to the phase of the PDCA cycle. So there's the approve enhancement, right? It's already green. There's the people that are going to do it. So let's imagine we got that done. Turns blue. Now we're officially planning. Assign the developer. Let's get this guy done by the, the 21st. And you can see again in the plan phase, these are the people. If you zoom in, again, those are the people that are being assigned. So close that and you can see there it is again in the plan phase. So I see we got 10 minutes left. I, I do want to leave room for questions, but I do want to show you this next piece. Um, and then we'll open it up for five minutes of questions. So you can see you're taking standard work and you're you're integrating it with the PDCA logic, you're integrating it with the RACI uh, accountability matrix. So people are understanding who and when things are gonna be need to get done. And you're obviously putting dates on those things and you're using automation to continuously keep that information visible and reminding people when necessary using the, automa the automatic uh, email push feature. So last thing we're going to do, value chain delivery. So now you saw how we take one uh, process, uh, standard work checklist. Now, what happens when you're, you're doing something that involves multiple processes, multiple checklists? So for example, when we do launch a marketing campaign, we got a bunch of things to do. We need to create content. We need to set up the email outreach. We need to get a newsletter uh, updated. We need to get webinars. You know, a, a lot of these things can be involved in a marketing campaign. So Let's do a launching a multi-process marketing campaign. So in this case here, what we have now, this, these are our newest uh, grouping features that just came out in the last few months. We believe they're going to be huge hits. They're already giving a lot of value to people. So up until now, everything, you've seen a very clean dashboard, and that's because I've had it filtered by everything open today. So now I'm going to show you everything that's on my plate. So now you can see these are all the things we're working on. These are all the things that still need to be acknowledged 97 things in the business development area. These are all the things that still need to be planned. You know, 60 things are overdue in the product team. And these are all real things. Now, to be honest with you, uh, the, the more aggressive you get with putting dates and getting things done, the more you find yourself fishing through red stuff. But if you read Andy Grove's famous OKR book, Measure What Matters, he always said it's better to see more red than a dashboard that's completely green because you have a dashboard that's completely green, you're not challenging yourself. So anyway, I believe there's a there's a good point in the middle that 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 you should find a sweet spot. So anyway, I look at this and I'm going to tell you now what's what's on my agenda, what what's on my mind. So you when you want to start talking about that big picture view, here it is. So we have we've set up this company to have these five types of activities. So we have our OKRs. What's our, what are OKRs? What are we working on right now? One of my OKRs is enhance PDCA awareness among the Presto community, users that are already Presto users. I want them to understand PDCA even more, especially that we got all these new features. And you can see there's six um, key results to this objective. I'm gonna click on this button and open it all up. And you can see immediately, uh, there's my objective, enhance PDCA awareness among Presto community. Here's my key results. And, and you can see where they are in the PDCA cycle. What about um, uh, what about cre uh, the, our Q2 roadmap for product enhancements? 24, this is a very aggressive one, 24 things, key results we're trying to push through to, uh, to support uh, one, this one objective. Let's go back a bit and talk about our agile projects. So, uh, 
here, this is what I'm usually talking about when I'm meeting with the developers. So Ramesh is leading the KPI enhancement workbench project. There he is. So, so we've set this up now for using the agile methodology where you got a parent project and then you got sprints. So basically, these are all the things that he's delivered to us. These are things he's working on. These are the things we want to get on the, on the radar. So let's imagine that that uh, that activity that we just uh, booked a second ago to create a new KPI report. I'm going to remove the filter now. And let's, let's imagine I completely forgot what project number that is. Now I could find that just by saying, show me what's open today. I could use this nice search box over here, but here we go. And you can see there it is. New KPI bullet chart is available on the KPI dashboard. Now let's imagine that this process, this uh, piece of work here, we want to assign to the uh, to the project of uh, the KPI uh, agile uh, agile workload work order. So here's where you can start linking things. So I'm going to link this project to, and I'm going to come here and I'm going to see there's my agile projects. There's the KPI enhancement workbench, and I'm linking it. So now this becomes a child of the KPI initiative. So now if I come back here, I'm going to remove this filter and say, show me again that KPI sprint, agile project, KPI enhancement, open that up. And now there's the project we just booked, new KPI bull, and you can see it's linked to that. And I'm out of curiosity, just so you know, when you build a parent project, I'll click on the actual parent project. Here's where you're gonna say, this is a parent project. And you can come here and this is completely customizable. You can say that this is an OKR, this is a small project. In this case, this is an agile development project. So that's that. One more quick thing, and then I'm going to leave this open to a few questions. Um, let's talk about the marketing campaign uh, that we, we spent a lot of time looking at the, the checklist. Let's go take a look at what this looks like from a, a top-down uh, point of view from the company. So I have, all, I have most items that are not product development related um, in the work orders. So you can see open work orders right now, we have this... Uh, cost cutting with standard work marketing campaign. So this this webinar itself is part of the uh, uh, is part of this campaign. Let's go down a bit so you can see how this cuts across different areas of the company. So if I take a look at let's go into marketing. So you can see in marketing we have content management, outreach management, website and sales funnel management, SEO, and then media and publicity partnerships. So if I take a look at our Q3 campaign on standard work and cost cutting, you can see it cuts across multiple areas of marketing. We've got people doing content activities. We've got people doing um, outreach and email, and we got people doing uh, website and sales funnel activity. And of course, if I, I'm gonna click on this now, cost cutting, I'm gonna open this up and you can see there it is. Uh, there's, there's our standard work sub projects we're calling them there's the parent project and the last thing i'll show you one thing very handy you we've, i've showed you how to link activities to um to project types you can also link to a bunch of things but one of the most uh, for me one of the most uh, useful links we have here is when you link to clients or, or vendors service providers so i could say imagine if this activity here was linked to my client learning cities right so now I link it to the client. Let's also imagine that it was linked to uh, my client Media Medic. So you can just start making as many links as you want. And then what happens is before you go have a meeting with the directors of Learning Cities, I'm just looking at my dashboard. I'm going to say, let's talk about everything that we're doing with Learning Cities. And you can just come here, go straight to your accounts. So you can see we got clients, service providers, government regulators, and prospects. I'm going to click on clients. There's Learning Cities. And you can see I got two projects. There's, there's their logo. You put a logo in. You can see there's Learning Cities outstanding projects. What about um, what was the other one I put? I put Media Medic. You can see I got two projects with them. One of them is business development related. One of them is operations related. What are they exactly? I open it up and you can see. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to give you that. Thank you for your patience. I hope I didn't overload you with information. Um, there was another example I was going to show you on marketing, but I think we all got the point. Um, so a reminder that, um, yeah, a reminder, if you're interested in uh, working with us to get your dashboard looking like ours, 
this is the offer for today. And uh, yeah, so any questions out there? I'm going to put my camera back on. I see some, I'm going to start looking in here as well. Okay. How'd we do, Chris? Yeah, all good. We're ready to start on time. So unless anyone's got any questions. I see we only have two people left. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay. All right. Well, guys, thanks a lot. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one.